Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today on this webinar titled Comparative Study of Different Main Brains Modeling Skin Penetration. This was a study comparing cellulose main brain, strat M, and human epidermis. My name is Bruna Lozada, and I am the European Manager of Teledyne Hansen. And this webinar will be presented by Professor Silvia Berko from the University of Szeged in Hungary and sponsored by Teledyne Hansen, which is an innovator and a leading manufacturer of dissolution and diffusion testing instruments. And in addition uh, to the products and the services that we offer, we are committed to supporting the global pharmaceutical industry with educational material such as this one that we have here today. So please check the Teledyne Hansen website and the social media channels often so that you don't miss any of this great content. So just before we start, I would like to mention a few things. Um, although everyone is on mute, you can submit your questions anytime by using the Q&A section on the bottom of your screen. And we will do our very best at the conclusion of this presentation to answer all of your questions. So if we run out of time, we will email you directly, don't worry. If you're having trouble hearing or if there are any connection problems, we suggest that you log off and try to log back on. And you should also know that this presentation will be available for a replay on the Teledyne Hansen YouTube channel, probably in a few days. So with that, I would like to present and to welcome our speaker today, uh, Professor Silvia Berko. Silvia works as an associate professor at the Institute of Pharmaceutical Technology and Regulatory Affairs of the University of Pharmacy uh, in the University of Szeged in Hungary. She graduated as a pharmacist in 1997 and has a PhD degree and a professional qualification as a pharmaceutical technologist. She gives lectures and practices for undergraduate and postgraduate students in the field of pharmaceutical technology. And her research area is dermal drug carrier systems, such as research and development of lipid nanoparticles, in situ film forming systems, investigation and modification of penetration of active substances through the skin, and study of active and passive penetration enhancing methods and has 75 scientific publications, which is very impressive. So I would like to welcome you, Sylvia, and now I'll turn it over uh, to you. Thank you for your kind attention, and I'm very glad to be here in this webinar, and I hope my presentation will be useful for the audience. Thank you, Bruna. Okay. Um, dear audience, let me start by saying just a few words about my workplace. My workplace is the University of Szeged. The University of Szeged is one of the largest universities in Hungary and in Central Europe. I'm working in the Faculty of Pharmacy at the Institute of Pharmaceutical Technology and Regulatory Affairs. My research group has an experience of researching and uh, developing various liquid and semi-solid dosage forms and special drug delivery system for dermal application. Beside the conventional forms, such as solution, suspension, immersion, creams, or gels, we develop innovative formulations such as lyotropic liquid crystals, nano-immersion, solid lipid nanoparticles, in-situ film forming system, or dermal forms. We can investigate the physiological parameters of the skin, such as skin hydration or transepidermal water loss. Furthermore, we can characterize the structural properties of drug delivery system with rheological measurements, and we can investigate the drug diffusion and penetration through the different synthetic and biological membranes using the front diffusion cell system, supplemented with Raman spectroscopy. In this lecture, I would like to talk about our research on dermal drug delivery system and how the hands-on micro topical and transdermal transdiffusion cell system supports our research work. Dermal formulation are commonly applied to deliver drugs 
to the skin and the underlying tissue or through the skin for systemic effect. The main reason for their success is they uh, have several advantages. For example, the avoidance of hepatic first pass effect, the gastrointestinal tract protection, and non-invasive application. These properties may increase the bioavailability of the drug, make it simpler and more convenient for the patient, improve the quality of life, and last but not least, increase the patient adherence. According to the market analysis conducted in 2016, profits from transderma preparation will increase significantly by 2024. Due to the increase in the number of derma drugs, it is important to optimize drug delivery through human skin and develop its research opportunities for modern therapy. The growing market demands also require an integrated regulatory environment that can help identify and evaluate the properties of the formulation in any place in the world. More and more documents are available for derma permeation and absorption studies from Europe and the United States. These documents present rules and descriptions of how to perform the derma permeation assay. However, the measurements are not properly regulated. These guidelines also help other industries in addition to the pharmaceutical research. In case of agro, uh, agrochemistry, think of pesticides and insect repellents, but the veterinary and cosmetic industries also rely on these guides. So it is especially important to increase the number of available data to draw conclusion. In this guise, the most commonly recommended quantitative method for measuring in vitro skin permeation is the use of front diffusion cell in the early stages of the development. The front type diffusion cell is an accepted and widely applied model for dermal and transdermal delivery. The cell consists of three parts, a chamber for sample preparation, a membrane through which the drug may diffuse, and receptor media chamber from which samples can be investigated. In our research group, we use the hands-on micro, topical, and transdermal front diffusion cell system. Uh, and this apparatus consists of six parallel cells. There is a magnetic rotation and temperature regulation during the examination. Samples are taken from the receptor phase by the auto sampler and the replaced with fresh medium, ensuring the possibility of the long-term measurements. In the guide, there are two groups of front diffusion tests. There, there are in vitro release tests and in vitro skin permeation tests. In case of the in vitro release test, the synthetic membrane should be used. In vitro release tests determine the rate and extent of the release of the active ingredients in the developed formulation. It can be a sensitive method that is generally responsive to physiological changes in products, and it's suitable, for example, for the characterizing and evaluating the performance of test and reference products. But IVRT is not expected to correlate with or be predictive of, of in vivo bioavailability or bioequivalence. In the early stages of the development, in vitro release tests should be used, but after that, in vitro permeation tests can be used for promising formulations. In case of in vitro permeation tests, the human skin are used as the membrane. These tests show the flux profile and the permeated quantities through the skin. IVPT are recommended, recommended for comparing the cutaneous permeation of drug from the test and reference products using excited human skin with a co competent skin barrier. Therefore, in case of IVPT, an in vitro in vivo correlation is expected. In order to obtain reliable derma permeability data, several parameters have to be considered for the design of this test system. These are the sink condition, incubation time, incubation temperature, mixing, hydration of the membrane, amount of dose, type of the membrane. 
let's see the sin condition. What is the sin condition? Sin condition ensures that the amount of the drug, which is already dissolved in the receptor media, does not affect the dissolution rate as the run progresses. We can find different requirements for proper sin condition, but uh, usually the sin conditions are described as the volume of the media being at least three times of that required to form a saturated solution of the drug substance. Because of it, uh, in the case of molecules with low water solubility, it is not easy to create a sin condition. What, ca what can we do? Uh, we can change the composition and the pH of the receptor and the donor phase. The suitable sync condition can be created. Or alternatively, the sync condition can be achieved using surfactants in the receptor phase. But a further solution is the use of serum albumin due to its ability of binding lipophilic components, just keeping the free concentration of the molecular molecule lower. According to the EMEA guide, the requirements for incubation time are as follow. The duration of the IVR tissue will be sufficient to characterize the real release profile, ideally releasing at least 70% um, of the active substance used. The minimum duration of IVPT testing is um, 24 hours. If the duration of the test is longer than 24 hours, the integrity of the membrane must be checked. It is important to consider the fact that the structure of the skin or the artificial membrane should remain unchanged until the end of the experiments. To avoid the overestimation of dermal permeation, different skin integrity tests are needed to eliminate the use of damaged skin. In case of dermal preparation, the expected temperature is uh, 32 degree centigrade, and in case of vaginal cream, the temperature should be uh, 37 degree centigrade. Next parameter is the mixing. Why is it important? If the stirring rate is high, it can result in a change in the membrane and the receptor, receptor media interface, which can affect the diffusion. If too low, the drug in the receptor solution may not be homogeneous. Hydration of the skin affects, among other things, the barrier function of the stratum corneum. Therefore, the creation of an optimal hydration state is essential. The state of hydration is also important for synthetic membranes. For example, a hydrophilic synthetic membrane can be made more lipophilic if impregnated with isopropylamide state. But it is important to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Regarding the amount of samples in the donor phase, two types of experiments can be distinguished, the finite and pseudo-infinite dose measurements. In case of in vitro release tests, usually the pseudo-infinite dose is used when the amount of the applied sample greatly exceeds the required amount, so the donor phase cannot be emptied under normal circumstances. As a result, when examining a permeability time profile, the strain line usually rises with a constant slope without exper uh, exper experiencing a plateau phase. The opposite of the pseudo-infinite dose is the finite dose usually used in the IVPT measurements. When finite doses are used, a limited amount of samples is applied to the skin. It should be noted that the latter experimental circumstance is much closer to the condition when the patient applies the given preparation onto his or her own skin. There are differences between the recommended doses by the guidelines. Beside on the recommendation of the OECD, a finite dose for a solution phase sample is maximum 10 microliter per square centimeter or is in the range of 1 to 10 milligram per square centimeter for a semi-solid sample, but the EMEA guide recommended 2 to 15 milligram per square centimeter. Okay, after the discussion about uh, the experimental condition, let's see how the different membranes influence the result of the test. 
In IVRT, different synthetic membranes can be used to test the formulation during development. Synthetic commercially available membranes generally consist of layers of polymeric mac macromolecules that determine the diffusion of drug through them. Several types of synthetic membranes are available, for example, silicon, uh, polyethyl sulfon, cellulose, polytetrafluorethylene, and mixture and uh, derivatives thereof. The aspect of membrane selection and properties expected from the membrane are the following. Inert, low binding capacity to the drug, compatibility with the release medium, compatibility with the test product. The membrane structure should remain consistent until the end of the experiment. One of the usual synthetic membrane used in the IVRT is the cellulose membrane. Uh, the cellulose membrane is a basic porous synthetic membrane. The pore size is different. Um, uh, for example, 0 0.45 micrometer or 0 0.25 micrometer. It can be used to test the efficiency of the topical formulation without rate limiting properties. Uh, regarding bio biological membranes, ex vivo animal models have been widely used to study the penetration of transdermal active substances. In IVPT, the human skin is the most important model for testing the delivery of drugs from different formulations. Uh, how great the correlation between the uh, skins of each species is mainly determined by the amount of free fatty acids and triglycerides in the tissue, as well as the density of the hair follicles. However, the animal and human skin membranes have many limitations. For example, ethical permission needed, and they have um, high variability, different sources, age, sex, race, and so on, and different anatomical parts, abdomen, tight, breast, or back, and the storage limitation. And what we have to know about the animal skin models. The most accurate model for human skin was found to be the porcine skin, as the thickness of the stratum corneum and the epidermis is very similar to that of human skin. Based on previous studies, the thickness of the stratum corneum in porcine skin is comparable to the parameters of the human skin. The skin taken from the porcine's ear is the most suitable for the amount of hair follicles. Here is the closest to the human. Another very often used tissue in the skin taken from the rodents, as these animals are the easiest to breed due to their small size, easy care, and low cost. Among these animals, the hairless species are the preferred ones as they better resemble the properties of human skin. However, overall, much higher permeation values can be measured through the skin of rodents, especially mice, as their skin thickness is much thinner compared to human skin. In IVPT, the most commonly used model to conduct the skin permeation study in the human skin. In our institution, in our research group, we use the excite human skin, skin from female patients who had undergone abdominal plastic surgery. We use only the epidermis because the main barrier, the stratum corneum, is in this layer of the skin. The procedure for the separation of the epidermis is as follows. Immediately after excision, the subcutaneous fatty tissue is removed and the skin is stored frozen at uh, minus uh, 20 degrees centigrade. For in vitro permeation study, the skin is stored and the epidermis is separated from the underlying dermis using the heat separation technique. Individual portions are immersed in water at um, 60 degrees centigrade for two minutes. After removing the skin from the water, it is placed stratum corneum side up on a filter paper and the epidermis is gently removed from the underlying dermis using a forceps. The latter is uh, discarded and the epidermal membrane is floated onto the surface of um, the receptor medium mm -hmm. at least two minutes. Then it is placed on a support, supporting synthetic membrane, and finally it is placed on the front cell. To make sure of the integrity of the epidermis, microscopic images are taken. Only intact skin is used for the measurement. 
From these slides, I would like to present some experimental results to understand why it is important to use the proper membranes. In the first study, the active agent was ibuprofen, and we tested two penetration enhancers, the sucrose laureate and the transmutor. Let's now take a look at the difference between the results using the synthetic or biological membranes, and how can we evaluate the results? The aim of the study was how to penetration enhancer influence the diffusion through synthetic membranes and penetration through the human epidermis of the ibuprofen. Different results were obtained with using synthetic membrane than using the human epidermis. In case of the synthetic membrane, transcutor seems to be the better penetration enhancer, but in case of the human epidermis, the sucrose ester increased the API's penetration to the skin. The transcutor Transcutor did not enhance but decreased ibuprofen penetration. It can be explained by the different acting mechanism of the two penetration enhancers. Sucrose laureate may cause a provisionally slight alteration in the skin structure. Its long hydrocarbon chains may interrupt with the lipids of the stratum cordum, re uh, reducing the barrier function. That is why sucrose laureate influences skin penetration using the biological membranes and does not act on the synthetic membrane. Transcutor works by increasing the solubility of the drug in the barrier. It works as a humectant and absorbs water, thereby increasing the water content of the skin. About the transcutor has been reported to increase the skin accumulation of drug. So, the drug depot in stratum cornum could be the reason for decreasing the skin penetration. In other tests, we compare diffusion and penetration of linear and cross-linked hyaluronic acid. It can be seen that diffusion of the cross-linked hyaluronic acid was more intensive. The linear hyaluronic acid also diffused through the synthetic membrane, but more slowly. But if we change the membrane for the human epidermis, there was no detectable penetration of linear hyaluronic acid during the observation period, whereas the level of the penetration of cross-linked hyaluronic acid was visible. The better diffusion and penetration of the cross-linked hyaluronic acid may be explained by the lower viscosity and the smaller particle size caused by the cross-linking. So we can see that um, the using of human epidermis is very important, but nowadays, due to the limitation of the biological membranes, there is a need for new innovative synthetic membranes, specifically created to be used as a substitute for human skin models in in vitro permeation studies. The stratum membrane is one newly introduced synthetic membrane to predict drug permeation with better human skin correlation. Stratum membrane simplifies experimental design and data analysis as a synthetic test model with low variability and no special storage or hydration requirements. Like human skin, the stratum membrane has multiple layers with different diffuseness. The membrane consists of two layers of poly polyethyl sulfon on top on, of one layer of polyolefin. In the following test, we compare the stratum membrane to a synthetic cellulose membrane and human epidermis. The first test preparation was a simple hydrogel. The active ingredient was the well detectable diclofenac sodium. As the graph indicates the results, the cumulative amount of the APIs through cellulose membrane, heat separated human epidermis and, epidermis and stratum membrane can be seen after 24 hours. Very high values of the cellulose membrane can be seen thanks to the high permeability of the porous structure, but the value of the stratum membrane closely approximated the penetration measured on the heat-separated human epidermis. But the correlation between the stratum and human epidermis is characterized with the exponential curve. The other test preparation was a nanostructured lipid carrier containing a lidocaine as the active agent. The NLCs are more complex drug delivery system than hydrogels. Thanks to the nano size and the special composition, it works as a penetration enhancer drug delivery system. The chart shows the results. 
uh, very high values of the cellulose membrane can be seen also. And the values of the stratum membrane closely approximated the penetration measured on the heat separated human epidermis. The correlation curve is similar to the results of the hydrogel. Based on the correlation curves, the permeability of the stratum appears to increase with time. So a question is what happens with the integrity of the stratum membrane during the investigation? So I think it should be investigated in the future. And finally, I would like to show how the Raman spectroscopic investigation supports the front diffusion cell measurements. In the following test, lyotopic liquid crystal system were formulated as a semi-solid preparation with different concentration of uh, papaverin hydrochloride. The lyotropic liquid crystal system have a special organized structure like lamellar, cubic, and hexagonal phases. The drug diffusion and penetration tests were performed on synthetic membrane and human epidermis with front diffusion cell. The quantitative front cell measurements were compared the qualitative Roman microscopic, uh, microscopic investigation to visualize the API in different skin layer. Before the results, uh, I would like to say about uh, our Raman measurements. Nowadays, the Raman spectroscopy is a new powerful technique to properly understand the skin structure and the uh, percutaneous drug delivery tool. Confocal Raman spectroscopy can be used to investigate topical formulation, for example, to follow the permeation of APIs into the skin layers. In this examination, we applied full thickness human subcutaneous fat free skin. The skin samples were treated with the formulations, and after the treatment, the skins are frozen and sectioned with a prior state. Permeation through the skin can be explored by chemical mapping when the treated and untreated skin samples, the different spectra of each component, and the APIs as reference are analyzed. Correlation map were captured, which show the relationship between the treated skin spectra and the defined reference spectrum were the higher intensity. The warmer color show a higher correlation with the reference spectrum, which predicts and presents predicts the presence and the higher concentration of the API. What do results show? In front cell measurements, to compare the LSE composition with different concentration of APIs, the penetration profile was the same in the case of IVRT and IVPT. Generally speaking, by increasing the concentration of the drug, the degree of diffusion increases, but in this case, the best diffusion and penetration results were found with the smallest concentration. To understand the results, membrane diffusion and skin penetration studies were supported by the results of the structural analysis. The LSC formulation with lower API concentration had a lamellar structure and lower viscosity, which resulting in better diffusion and the penetration. The Raman correlation maps evict the presence of uh, papaverin hydrochloride in the different region of the human skin. In correlation with the skin penetration results, the most effective penetration was shown with the lowest concentration of papaverin hydrochloride containing LLC. The API would be found in the region of the dermis and epidermis in the skin. With the increasing API concentration, the penetration is decreasing. In correlation with the rheological investigation, the less effective LLC system is the highest API concentration containing uh, system. This composition has a high viscosity and is hard to use to disperse on the skin surface. Therefore, as shown on the Raman map, the whole composition can be found in the stratum corneum region of the skin and the penetration is blocked. Um, and uh, if we summarize uh, the presentation, uh, we can um, see the synthetic stratum membrane show a good correlation with heat separated human epidermis uh, using the front cell method, but I think further studies are needed. Um, the front cell results show a good correlation with uh, Raman spectroscopy. And um, 
finally, uh, the, conclu the conclusion of my presentation is that the modeling of the penetration into a skin layer and the permeation through the skin is a complex challenge. The France diffusion cell method is widely used and accepted by the authorities. This in vitro model provides important tools for screening drug formulation, evaluating skin permeation, and investigating the me mechanism of the action of the carrier system. However, it is also very important to develop the known methods as well as to create suitable experimental condition, use the cost-effective membranes, or supplement the results with other techniques, because the success of topical and transdermal therapy is related to the techniques used to evaluate the formulation, which helps to optimize the skin penetration of the active ingredients. And now I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, and thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you so much, Sylvia. It was a great presentation, and I'm sure it was very useful and interesting to our audience. So now, as Sylvia said, um, we will open for questions. And just a reminder for everyone, you can submit your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Thank you. Okay, so here is the first question for you, Sylvia, um, about the strut and membrane. Um, Someone is asking, if I understand well, there is no need to soak in receptor media before use. And if there is the need for how long should I soak the membrane? Can you hear me, Sylvia? Okay. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here, mm -hmm. thank you for the question. Yeah. And um, yes, uh, the suggestion of the, uh, the manufacturer in case of the stratum membrane is um, uh, the, hydration, the hydration is not required, but uh, we use uh, the stratum membrane as uh, the recommendation. Um, um, I don't know uh, this, uh, what is the soaking time before using this mem in, in, in case of this membrane, but uh, in case of another um, synthetic membrane, uh, cellulose membrane, we usually soak uh, the cellulose membrane for 30 minutes before use. 30 minutes, okay, thank you. Um, another question, uh, is strat -M suitable for examination of microneedles or nanoparticles? Yes, it's a very good question, <laughs> but uh, in case of, um, uh, in case of uh, nanoparticles, uh, we uh, make investigation with nanoparticles because uh, in the presentation, uh, you can see that the solid lipid nanoparticles, um, uh, there was investigated. So um, uh, it is uh, used and um, uh, the, in case of stratum membrane, the, the total amount of the uh, penetration of the API was very close to the human epidermis. So I think uh, in this case, um, is it possible to use the stratum membrane? But uh, in case of microneedle, it's a good question. Maybe it, I think it should be uh, try. Uh, how, can we, how can we use this membrane in, in case of microneedles? Okay. We didn't try it. Yeah, very good, thank you. Um, another question, um, my study concerns the development of thin films with wound healing properties. I want to know what you recommend uh, to use as a main brain for analyzing the penetration of active substances from thin films to the wounded skin. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, if you want to uh, analyze the, the skin penetration, um, so this is the IVPT measurement. So in this case, we have to use the biological membranes, um, such as the uh, heat separated human epidermis, but is it possible to use, for example, dermatomic skin? Um, I think uh, they are the best choice to investigate the skin penetration. Um, all of uh, 
formulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. There are many great questions, Sylvia. <laughs> um, when a new model or main brain is developed that can be viable, a, a viable alternative to human skin, uh, it is generally tested on a certain number of compounds. On what basis are these compounds chosen? Okay. Um, we tested the stratum membrane. Um, with uh, not the, not uh, not uh, compounds that formulations uh, we uh, compare different formulations such as uh, hydrogas uh, uh, solid lipid nanoparticles creams or gs uh, so we compare the, the preparation the, the formulation the pharmaceutical uh, dosage form we tested um, uh, on the stratum membrane and we compared to human skin so um, uh, we can see uh, the compounds uh, testing, but but um, be interested in um, that uh, how the stratum membrane works uh, if we uh, use the different uh, formulation and how does it compare uh, to the human skin, but not. Uh, the com not uh, the all the compounds not only mm -hmm. the compounds yes okay. the whole formulation okay very good um another question um can you explain the difference in penetration between strat m and the whole skin as the whole skin tends to retain the api how about strat m uh, yes Did you hear the uh, question? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I, I see the question. Okay. Uh, the stratum and the whole skin. Uh, yes, uh, in the presentation, um, you can see that um, uh, the stratum is the modeling the whole skin. But um, because uh, uh, stratum uh, models the permeability of the skin, there is an um, um, upper part of the stratum permeability is uh, is low and the lower part of the stratum is uh, um, the, uh, the permeability of the stratum the lower part of the stratum is uh, higher modeling uh, the skin um, um, if we check the um, permeation study that's compared the formulation and different APIs, uh, the results are very close to each other, but um, uh, we didn't uh, check the APIs in, in stratum membrane, for example, but we can check the, well, how is the retained APIs in the stratum? We have to um, uh, analyze the stratum membrane. We didn't analyze the membrane, but uh, only we uh, analyzed the, penetration and we analyze the APIs in the in the receptor phase only. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, another question. Um, it's about price and I don't know if you have this type of information, but how does Strat M would compare in terms of price to the porcelain skin? The price is the mm -hmm. Poor science skin and stratum compare. It's a good question <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because the stratum is not 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 cheap, uh, mm -hmm. not um, uh, not a cheap membrane. But I don't know what is the price of the poor sign because um, we didn't uh, use the poor science skin. We we only use the human epidermis, but we we get the human epidermis from the plastic for uh, plastic surgery. So mm -hmm. it's uh, there is no price, so it's we are very lucky. So we have um, we have uh, free uh, skins from yeah, the skin. plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we can get back to you uh, with for the who asked with more information if we can find about the price. 
Um, another question, and then I think we will wrap up the webinar and we can get back to a few other questions that are still in the list uh, directly via uh, email. Uh, but I'll finish with this one. If you've experienced any incompatibility uh, for the strat M between the main brain and different recipients that you used. Have you experienced any? Okay, okay yes. Uh, yeah. the, the compatibility. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we can find um, recommendation uh, in the website of the distributor of the stratum membrane, that you can see a list uh, the compatibility of the different um, different uh, components. But uh, I think uh, it's um, uh, very important to take into consideration the concentration of the components. So maybe uh, in in lower, for example. Um, surfactants. The, in, uh, the lower concentration of the sur surfactants is uh, compatible with the stratum membrane, but uh, the higher concentration is not. So it depends on the, the, the attributes of the components and depends on the concentration of the components, uh, the compatibility. I think so. Okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, so that is all for today, Sylvia. Thank you very much um, for your um, attendance here and for answering all the questions.